Welcome to another video. Let's take the limit of this function, a function that includes a definite integral. Okay, just by looking at it, let's try and see what happens. X goes to, sorry, not X now, H is our variable. So H approaches zero, and here we have one over H, we have one over zero. That's already a problem. Okay, but let's say what we have is just 1 over 0. Well, 1 over 0 would give us infinity. But it is also okay to have infinity times something. As long as this is not 0. Because if this is 0, then it would be a major problem. Okay, because you cannot have infinity times 0. So we go to this side and we have an integral where you're going to plug in h equals 0. So if we plug in 0 here, oh, we're going to be having an integral that goes from 2 to 2 because there's no h here, okay? So it doesn't matter what function you are integrating. If you're going from the same boundary to the same boundary, it means there is zero area you're going to cover. It's the same point you're at. If this is 2 and this is 2, so this definite integral is 0. This is infinity. So this gives us infinity times zero. Infinity times zero is indeterminate, and therefore you cannot compute the limit. Whenever you have infinity times zero, you have to find a way to write it as zero over zero, or infinity times infinity. And then you can employ L'Hopital's rule in computing what we have. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's get into it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that by inspection, by inspection, the limit is infinity times zero, which is of indeterminate form, indeterminate. And because we do not want indeterminate form, we're going to rewrite this limit as the limit as h goes to zero. Remember I said, whenever you have an indeterminate form, L'Hopital's rule would help, but it only helps if you can rewrite the expression or the function that you're about to take the limit of as zero over zero or infinity over infinity. And recall that we said that this part is gonna be zero because you're going from two to two when h is zero and you're gonna have one over h here. So we might as well put all of this on top of this. So we rewrite this expression as the integral from two to two plus h of the square root of one plus t cubed dt. That's what we have on top divided by h. Now this way you have zero under as h goes to zero and as h goes to zero, this also will go to zero because this will go from two to two. So now you have the zero over zero situation and then L'Hopital's rule will apply. And what does L'Hopital's rule say? It says, differentiate the top and differentiate the bottom and try to take the limit. You should get your answer. Okay, so by L'Hopital's rule, okay, by L'Hopital's rule, we're gonna have this is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches zero of the derivative. Now, what are we differentiating this with respect to? Remember, this is our variable, so you'll be differentiating with respect to h, not with respect to t, okay? Not t, h this time, because that's our variable. So it's going to be ddh of the integral from 2 to 2 plus h of, um, what do we have, the square root? of one plus t cubed dt. Okay, we're gonna be differentiating this and we'll be dividing by the derivative ddh of the denominator. As you can see, this is the same thing as the limit as h goes to zero of, now how do you differentiate this? Now you have to go back to your derivative of, an, of a definite integral. Whenever you have this definite part, go from a constant 
to a function. Now, this is a function. Remember, this is a variable. So what you do is you take this upper boundary, which is a function, and you plug it into the t. That's how you differentiate this function. This is from FTC 1 and 2. Okay, um, I'll put the links in the description for in case you don't understand how to do this. So we're going to take this, use it to replace t cubed, and then whatever answer you get, you're going to multiply it by the derivative of 2 plus h. So this is what we're going to get. Our answer is going to be just this, the square root of 1 plus the upper part, 2 plus h cubed. What happens to this? Nothing. Because it's a constant, it's 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or minus 4. As long as it's a constant, you don't need to deal with it. This is not a constant. It's a function that has a variable. That's why we can do what we're doing. Okay, now, so this is what you have after taking the derivative multiplied by the derivative of 2 plus h. Always remember to do that. The derivative of 2 plus h, the same thing you plugged in here, you have to use it to multiply your answer. Okay, now what's the derivative of h? It's 1, so I don't need to write over 1. That's it. So what's the derivative of 2 plus h? It is also 1. So you notice that our work is clean. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of, I just need to deal with this, the square root of 1 plus 2 plus h cubed. Now, as h goes to 0, this is going to go to 0. This is the same thing as the square root of 1 plus 2 plus 0 gives me 2. So that's going to be 2 cubed, which is the same thing as the square root of 1 plus 8, which is the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. So the answer to this limit is 3. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.